Okay, right, so obviously I assume everyone has seen that the UCI are gonna ban the super tuck from April 2021. Now obviously, you know, people have seen my video about Mohoric, you know, in my opinion, the OG uh, creator of the super tuck. Uh, he also pedaled on the super tuck as well. And it was very much popularized by Chris Froome in the 2015 Tour de France, where he attacked into Bagno de Luchon, sorry, yeah, Bagno de Luchon on the back of the parasute. And obviously, you know, from then on, I think people really started to take it a bit more seriously. Before that, like, if you watch the pros, you'd see Sagan, Nibali, a couple others, like, use it. But a lot of pros were like, no. And I know that Matt White apparently at one point said to his team, like, please don't do it because if your front wheel has a puncture, you're in big trouble. So obviously, like, in that sense, you know, it's not, it hasn't, wasn't that widespread. And I think in the last maybe two to three years, potentially, it's got really, really, really popular. Like, I'd say on every descent, everyone does it. Like, it's very rare. But what people did before is where they hold, like, the center of the bars and then sort of put their head down as much as possible. I'll put a, a picture up somewhere. Uh, but anyway, so I think that one, people said, oh, it tests very similar, but obviously you're not on the top tube. So in terms of, like, um, if, you know, if your front wheel goes or something like that, then it's probably easier to rescue. But then at the same time, you're not touching the brakes. So I don't know which is better. In my opinion, probably about the same safety wise, if not slightly better holding onto the top, onto the, um, near the stem. And I think realistically, that's where everyone's gonna go. But the question is, should the UCI buy, ban it? And in my opinion, no. And you might think, well, okay, like that, I mean, I understand the arguments against. So the arguments against basically are bad in terms of safety for pros, which is, okay, we'll, we'll get onto the against arguments, but bad, bad for safety for pros, I guess, is number one bad impression, like get juniors and random mammals doing it in the street, not good. Uh, and then I guess, yeah, those are the two arguments, more or less. So number one, bad for pro safety. I think that's really hard to argue because people, the pros know how to ride a bike, right? They don't do it in the middle of the bunch generally uh, because they know it's sketchy. Like the first like one or two riders will be in the position if it's a long, like fast, straight descent. And everyone else is just like aero, but not on the top tube. So I think in terms of like pro safety, I think it's very hard to argue that because I don't think, and everyone on Twitter said this, that anyone's actually crashed due to the top tube descending. So then it's like, well, why would you ban it? But I think the other reason is a lot more valid. However, I still think it's probably, in my opinion, it's not worth it. So obviously the argument that amateurs, mammals, juniors are gonna do it, I get it. But then I'd say two things. You can't mandate what people are going to do on the open road. Like, it is what it is. Obviously, you know, people in the pros, like, you know, they have a piss when they're riding a bike and things like that. It's like, well, yeah, like, you're going to see that, but it's not like you're just going to go out and copy it. And if you are, I don't think that's UCI's fault. So that's my number one point. My number two point is, like, amateurs and juniors will just ban it in their races. Like, most races I've done uh, in the UK banned it. And they said, if you do the top tube, you get DQ'd. And I'm like, that makes sense because do I want someone who's raced a bike, like, you know, less than 20 times, maybe even 30 times, like they're not experienced enough to do the top tube, especially in like with other people. So I think, yeah, for sure, like, you know, ban it there. I have no issues with it. And to be honest, if I did see someone on the top tube in my race, I'd be like, wait, lad, like, no, no, no. Uh, however, in Australia, actually, someone did overtake me on the top tube pedaling, which maybe we'll have a little clip here somewhere, uh, which I didn't know you could do because obviously I was in the UK and like everyone was just like, nah, top tube and like, ah, it's a big risk. So yeah, those are my, my sort of thoughts in, in that regard, as in like, it's quite hard to really mandate something. That, and like junior racing, well, that's just chaotic anyway, but if you want to ban it there, then ban it there. And I think, you know, the UCI, okay, I can understand it's like, we want to improve safety, yeah, yeah. But like, you should improve safety that the pros don't have a choice about. The pros don't have a choice if you have a roundabout within one kilometer of the finish. The pros don't have a choice if you have a descent sprint, which you hit 80k an hour. They don't have a choice, they have to race it, that's their job but they have a choice on whether they're super tough or not. So if it's dumb, then it's super tough. Like you didn't see anyone on the Kemmelberg when they used to send that on the cobbles and the super tough, did you? No, because it's dangerous. So like the pros aren't dumb. Like if it's if it's dangerous, they won't do it. Um, they're not like, you know, most of them aren't gonna be on the top tube round corners. And if anything, I think it's sort of like taking away people's natural advantage, like Moritz and people like them, because obviously, you know, there's a terminal velocity you can hit on a bike and it's a faster terminal velocity if you can get on the top tube, which means then if you go around corners and you're a better descender, then you're gonna be able to you know, keep that line and you're gonna put gaps into people. But now, like let's say the terminal velocity on this corner is 90K an hour, now it's gonna be 85, and everyone can take that corner at 85 because everyone's like, yeah, it's fine, but maybe only Morich and a couple other nutters will do it at 90. So then they've just like lost maybe a second or two, and then you know that adds up on the descent. So I think it's, yeah, it's just not really very good. 
um, will it actually affect races? I think it's quite hard to say it will actually affect races because it's like, it's just a bit meh. But I don't think it really makes sense. And I also just don't really understand, like no pros want this. Apparently they did put out a message saying to pros like, oh yeah, like we're gonna do this, do you care? And apparently they were like, nah, it's all right. But, that, but there's probably like some UCI thing that no one actually told them. And then they were like, it was too late because every, I don't think a single pro on Twitter really has been like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. They're like, I can understand it. And I, you know, juniors and mammals and all the rest of us shouldn't do it. Makes sense. Understand that. But no one's been like, oh yeah, it's really dangerous in a bunch. I mean, it's like, if it was dangerous in a bunch, they would just like, one of the lads would say, oi, donkey, stop doing getting on the top tube in the middle of the bunch. I mean, it's like, you know, it is what it is. I think it, it can be self-policed, to be honest. Uh, I don't think the UCI needs to get involved on things that don't really affect them. I think they should get involved on things, like I said, where the riders don't have a choice, like choice of routes, choice of barriers, things like that, that there's just should be standards, but I don't see why they should mandate like things that like that. Um, it just doesn't really make any sense. And I mean, if they want to stop dodgy, the main reason there are crashes is less bonuses because on descents, it's because of like dodgy corners, like the one in, uh, the Dauphiné where Roglic crashed because the road wasn't properly. So dodgy descents, number one. Roundabouts and things like that towards the end, like Etoile de Bessage, stage two. So get rid of roundabouts near the end of the sprint for stages. That'd be quite good. Um, and number three is people swerving across the line towards the sprint. So just ban people who do that. Very simple. And I think if you did those three things, didn't have dodgy descents, didn't have roundabouts and dodgy things at the end of sprint stages and stop people from swerving across their lines, like that, that's probably going to stop most avoidable if we can say avoidable crashes because obviously some of them are just going to happen uh but yeah those are my thoughts obviously leave your comments down below uh let me know what you think about the whole uci's decision but for me it doesn't really seem to make any sense but it is the uci so what can we say but anyway cheers for watching and we'll see you in the next one